Should you be documenting the stages of writing your novel? The answer is absolutely you should, but you should be doing this for marketing purposes after the book is out. In most cases, especially if you're trying to get a traditional contract, you need to be silent about the projects that you're working on because a traditional publisher needs to be able to dictate the marketing. So don't be talking about this publicly. They are the ones that are going to dictate it once they pick your book up and you will potentially hurt your chances of getting a book deal if you are running your mouth before this book is acquired by a publisher because you are hurting potential marketing plans. So be smart about that. And you also want to make sure that you are not talking about something that doesn't exist yet for a couple of reasons, especially if you're going indie. If you're talking about a book that is not available for purchase yet, people will hear that, be really interested in it, but be upset that they can't get it. And by the time you eventually put this book out, because let's be real, for most people, it takes a year or two to get a book out from the time you start writing it to going out to the public. So it's a long period of time. If you're talking about what you're writing right now and how you're doing it, and it then takes you a year or two to put this book out for people to buy, they're going to have heard so much about it that by the time it rolls around, they will think it's out and I just forgot to get it or it's out, but I've waited so long, I can wait longer to read this book. As a very specific example, one of my all-time favorite series had the first two books published by a publisher and then that publisher did some really bad shady things. We've talked about it before because I almost signed with them back in the day. And the the author was unable to put that book out until all the legal battle stuff was done. And it had taken years at that point. At that point, when they finally put it out, I was excited for it. But because it had been so long, I literally said, it's okay. I don't have to get it right now. I'm busy right now. I've waited this long. I can wait a little bit longer. And to this day, many years later, I've never read the last book because it took so long because they talked about it because I was excited for it, but it took forever. And then it doesn't matter because it took so long. I'll get to it. And I'll get to it. Maybe one day. I'm not going to read it. I, I, the reality is I'm never going to read that book, which is so sad because I want to see how it ended. But if you talk about your book in advance and you don't have the ability for people to get it in their hands right now or to get it on pre-order, they're going to forget about it. And then it's going to turn into a situation where maybe they read it and maybe they don't. But it doesn't matter to them anymore. So don't go running your mouth in advance. It's not going to serve your purposes. You want to make sure you keep that nice and quiet until there is a buy link ready to go. Then you can lean into the marketing. But documenting your writing process in real time, in the moment, can be one of the greatest marketing things that you can do. As you're writing books, and I've done this before, you can't find them because I had, I never did put them out, but you can document how you're writing it. Today I did this and I worked on this and I learned this and I figured out how to do this and I got this many words and your excitements, the highs and the lows of writing it and editing it and doing all the things. Talk about it in a way that is spoiler free and then create a compilation video. Put it out for people to see after the fact. Here's how the writing process went. Here's how I did these things. Here's how all of this came to be. And this is really great if you're indie or traditionally published. If you get a big name publishing contract and then people get to watch the behind the scenes of how you created their favorite book that gets turned into a movie that hit the New York Times bestseller and all of these things, they get to see that process and get that hope for them as well that they can do that too. That's epic marketing. If you're an indie author and you've created somebody's absolute favorite series and they get to watch you develop it in kind of a real-time way, all compiled together after it's out, that could change the game for them and give them hope for how they're doing their author life too. Creating that documentation is very valuable for them and for marketing and for making this profitable, but it's also really fun to document it for you as you can look back and see how far you've come and what you've learned and how you've grown and how you've changed, especially if you're a slow writer and it takes you more than a couple of months to write a book. Look at the way that you change physically, mentally, emotionally. It is wild to see some of those dramatic changes over a longer period of time. And for those that write quickly like me, you can see how you have changed throughout the course of the story and how you feel about the characters. You guys know I have one book series where I had a character force his way into my story and then create a main character status for himself and then took over my entire second book. And I I had this progression of despising him for a very long time and then have really big feelings about it and then completely changing to a complete 180 when I realized just how valuable and meaningful and important he was to the story. And now I just absolutely adore him. One of my favorite characters that I've ever written. But if, if you could see the progression of like 
the anger and the despisal to the actual love, the enemies to lovers progression of me and this character. It's freaking fun to watch. So documenting these things, really good for yourself, really good for learning about yourself as an author, really good for marketing purposes, and really fun to share with your audience. I cannot say enough good things. And you can document it however you want, videos, photos, written word, whatever, whatever. But have that in real time so that you have the real time experience, the real time emotion, the real time feelings, so that you can look back without having to think, how do I feel about that? And remember what was going on. Follow on for more ideas on how you can leverage your author life to create a really cool author life, but also live the best life ever. We'll see in the upcoming episodes.